Ladies and gentlemen, Ramadanul Mubarak. Good morning to you all and welcome to the seminar on Revisiting Arbitration Act for Promoting FDI in Bangladesh, organized by Dhaka Chamber of Commerce and Industry, DCCI. Thank you for being with us today. Distinguished guests, it's our privilege to welcome Mr. Anisul Haq MP, Honorable Minister, Ministry of Law, Justice and Parliamentary Affairs, Government of the People's Republic of Bangladesh as today's chief guest. We have also with us His Excellency, Mr. Robert Chatterton Dixon, the British High Commissioner in Bangladesh as a special guest. Respected guests, the keynote paper will be presented by Barrister Ashraful Hadi, Advocate, Supreme Court of Bangladesh, and the seminar will be chaired by Barrister Mohammad Sami Sattar, President, DCCI. Ladies and gentlemen, before going into the next part, I would like to request President Haka Chamber to welcome our chief guest to DCCI with a small token of memento. Thank you, sir. Now, I would like to call upon President DCCI, Barrister Mohammad Sami Sattar, to deliver his welcome remarks. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Chief Guest, uh, Mr. Anisul Haq MP, Honorable Minister for Law, Justice and Parliamentary Affairs of the Government of Bangladesh. Special Guest, His Excellency, Mr. Robert Chatterton Dixon, the British High Commissioner to Bangladesh. Keynote Presenter, Barrister Ashraful Hadi, Advocate of the Supreme Court of Bangladesh. Distinguished Panelists and Guests, Assalamu Alaikum and a very good morning to you all. It is indeed a matter of great pleasure to welcome you all to today's seminar on revisiting the Arbitration Act for promoting foreign direct investment in Bangladesh, organized by the Dhaka Chamber of Commerce and Industry. We are thankful to the chief guest, special guest, and all of you for joining us today, despite your busy schedule. Over the past decades, Bangladesh has emerged as one of the fastest growing economies in South Asia. This growth is backed by the significant progress in many socio-economic fronts and the evolving private sector. With the consistent economic growth and the support of resilient policy decisions taken by our visionary Honorable Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina, Bangladesh is set to graduate into a developing economy by 2026, followed by a developed nation by 2041, inshallah. As we strive forward, Dhaka Chamber, being the country's most active and valued chamber, representing more than 4,500 members, has been constantly providing fact-based opinions and policy recommendations to the government, our policymakers, on how they can improve the trade and the overall economic and investment ecosystem. Distinguished guests, Bangladesh offers one of the most rewarding and competitive foreign direct investment regime in South Asia, featured by its blended incentives and supported by investment-friendly international regulations. Taking into account the economic, strategic, and other investment dividends, Bangladesh has emerged as one of the frontier investment hubs regionally. However, there is still room for, for improvement, and we would like to improve our foreign investment trajectory. 
and in order to further promote the ongoing growth and success of our business climate, it is absolutely essential that we establish a legal framework that enables a swift and efficient contract enforcement mechanism, especially in the context of cross-border commercial disputes. A stable business environment featured by an efficient resolution system is one of the prerequisites for attracting foreign investments into a country. Uh, we need significant improvement in our contract enforcement environment, which currently limits our potential investments. Therefore, it is essential, we feel, to reform the Arbitration Act as the first step towards addressing such challenges which exist in our legal environment. Ladies and gentlemen, with a rapid FDI stream in Bangladesh, the number of commercial disputes has risen significantly over the past few decades. As a result, arbitration has emerged as the preeminent mode of dispute resolution in recent times. Arbitration is meant to be fast and cost effective way of resolving commercial disputes. And traditionally, we have seen that foreign investors have chosen arbitration over national court litigation when resolving cross border disputes. However, in Bangladesh, Arbitration does not necessarily offer a speedy mechanism to resolve disputes and is sometimes seen by foreign investors as an additional form of dispute resolution as opposed to an alternative form of dispute resolution. This is so even though the Arbitration Act 2001 was enacted in Bangladesh in line with the ancestral model law uh, on, on international commercial arbitration. Distinguished guests, while we will hear from our keynote presenter and panelists about the challenges that arbitration users face in Bangladesh, I cannot help but to state that the enforcement of arbitral awards must be made less cumbersome in Bangladesh so that investors, whether they're local or foreigner, do not have to entangle themselves with the same lengthy court litigation which they wanted to avoid in the first place. This is a need of the hour and a step which was long overdue. Amendment of the Arbitration Act to make arbitrations easy and more time organized will certainly help businesses in Bangladesh. And I will request our chief guest to look into this matter with urgency. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, I would like to request our keynote presenter to make his brief presentation before us today as to which provisions need amendment and how these amendments will help ease the arbitration process and promote investment into Bangladesh. After this seminar, like we usually do, we will then place formal recommendations to our Honorable Law Minister from Dhaka Chamber. Once again, I would like to express my sincere gratitude to all of you who are present here and for contributing to, to the success of this event. Despite uh, fasting or being in the month of Ramadan, which I know can be a bit uh, cumbersome. Thank you very much. I love it. Thank you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, at this point, the keynote paper will be presented by Barrister Ashraf Hadi, Advocate, Supreme Court of Bangladesh. Thank you. Um, Honorable Chief Guest. Uh, special guests, President and Board of Directors of the Dhaka Chamber of Commerce and Industries, distinguished guests, thank you for inviting me here. Um, Assalamu alaikum and good morning. Uh, it's been a privilege, uh, it's a privilege to be invited over here to speak on this uh, August gathering. And I would like to begin by conveying my special sincere thanks to Honorable Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina, Honorable Minister over here. During the COVID period, when the country was at the judicial justice delivery system was about to be shut down, their prompt action enabled the justice delivery system in Bangladesh for the first time in Bangladesh. That 
created a window of opportunity for Bangladesh to grow and see uh, growth in the justice delivery system in a unique manner. Uh, and then that was the first time. And I believe that the Honorable Minister and the Chief Guest would also uh, take similar prompt actions with regard to Amendment of Arbitration Act because the arbitration is an alternative means of dispute resolution mechanism. Why do we need to improve our dispute resolution mechanism? With Bangladesh progressing towards the new millennia, our investments are increasing, and with increasing investments, like our president of Dhaka Chamber mentioned just now, that our commercial transactions are ever increasing. And with ever increasing commercial transactions, disputes are naturally, will naturally arise. And if there is an effective, fair, and speedy dispute resolution mechanism, the businesses can go on to do their own work without having to be stuck down and be delayed by the disputes. Arbitration Act was passed in 2001, which is about 22 years ago. Now the time is, need, is, is high for us to amend it because we have learned from our lessons as to what are the shortcomings in our act. We, there have been many litigations in our act and slide. Yes, we will start with the slides and we need to uh, amend it. So I would like to go to the straight to the slides with your kind permission. The slides are not moving. The slides are not moving. Thank you. Uh, please bear with me. It's a technical subject. So uh, I, I would like to go through the technical subjects as easily as possible on this on, on these issues. The main majority of the disputes in Bangladesh that arose out of Arbitration Act 2001 is arise out of section, section three of the Arbitration Act. Section three of the Arbitration Act said that the, this Arbitration Act only applies to arbitration that are seated or venue is in Bangladesh. As a result in the defect in the definition, whenever we have an arbitration that is seated outside Bangladesh, but it required inter interim measures in Bangladesh, the act was creating an hindrance in our process. Therefore, it is important that we amend the arbitration act by removing or amending the definition, the limitation that applies to the, applies to the with respect of the seat of the arbitration. The other aspect that needs improvement in the Arbitration Act is the how we execute the interim orders passed by the arbitration tribunals. Currently, for execution or effecting the interim orders that are passed by the arbitration tribunal, we have to go to the court. Therefore, we are not reducing the burden of the courts, but rather we are increasing the burden of the court by bringing on to the court interim applications from time and time again with relating to arising out of interim orders that are passed by the arbitration tribunal. If we can empower the arbitration tribunal to pass necessary orders for giving effect to its interim orders. That way we can reduce the liability or burden on the courts. Simply, but with the absence of such powers of the arbitration tribunal, currently I would describe it as a toothless tiger, a tiger that has the, that can't bite. It can pass interim orders, but the interim orders cannot be given effect to without help of the court. Regarding jurisdiction and power of the arbitration tribunals, interim orders at the moment are uh, the first slide, the second slide are more or less related. For if, if we have to go to the local courts for execution or enforcement of the interim orders passed by the interim uh, arbitration tribunals, the local courts are already burdened by diff many different matters. The local courts are not specialized. We do not have specialized commercial courts. The, com the courts that has to be dealt with or be responsible with this arbitration enforcement arbitration orders are already dealing with lots of title suits, lots of money suits. They are also dealing with orthodox other lot cases. They're dealing with uh, rental disputes, many other disputes they're dealing with. Therefore, if we can have arbitration tribunal can give effect to its own orders, it will be easier and will unburden the court's lives. The court currently, that was the discussion we were having in the floor just a few minutes back. The the court that is defined in is only the Dhaka District Court at the moment. For execution of awards, we have we have to go to the Dhaka District Court at the moment. 
but when we go to the Dhaka district court, the Dhaka district judge has to deal with trademark disputes, uh, rental disputes, lots of family disputes. It has to deal with appeals. It is dealing with criminal cases that are arising, resting before it on its table. Among all this multitude of cases that the Dhaka judge, judge, district judge has to deal with, an added burden of dealing with arbitration and execution cases becomes a nightmare for him also to dispose of. Therefore, we naturally see long delays in these kind of cases. An effective way that was dealt with by India, Singapore, and Malaysia has been they have set up international commercial courts. International commercial courts have been equipped to deal with only arbitration disputes and commercial disputes that are brought before it. It doesn't deal with any other kinds of disputes. As a result, not only the judges develop a technical knowledge and a sensitivity towards the commercial disputes and the different technical terms and nuances that applies in the commercial worlds. Also, the judges having to deal with only commercial disputes, it makes them, it allows them to an effective use of time to dispose of cases in a very speedy and effective manner. Alternatively, we can empower the high court division, the company bench, or the admiralty bench to deal with these kind of technical issues because a company bench is much more technically knowledgeable sound and equipped to deal and understand the technical nuances of these kind of cases compared to the district courts the time time has become the biggest enemy for arbitration as well as litigation currently our arbitration act doesn't contain any guidelines as to within which period of time an arbitration must complete. I understand it is perfectly normal that the time cannot be specific. Uh, some, some of the cases can be completed within six months, some of the cases can be completed within three months, and some cases may take one year. But how about an arbitration that is going on for six years and seven years? Uh, we have faced clients who are frustrated because the arbitration that they are dealing with are going on for six years and seven years. This is unacceptable. There should be some indication in the act that the tribunals should try to complete those proceedings within at least a year or a year and a half. More than a year and a year and a half, more than that is unacceptable in my eye, unless there are extreme and exceptional reasons as to why this should happen. But otherwise, in the absence of a specific guidelines from the act, the tribunals at the moment do not know how to contain, how to limit the time limits. For example, there are certain uh, in Singapore and in Malaysia, there are time limits spent or indications provided in the act that let's say from within step one to step two, it should be within 15 days or step two to step three, it should be within 27 days or a month, not more than that. Because otherwise the, without specific stipulating time limits, the efficacy of the arbitration act is, is, is not being effective. We're not, not, we're not getting results out of it. Also, the time frame, not only the time frame, because time frame regarding the arbitration proceedings, I've just mentioned, I think it's a second time. Rules regarding discovery. In an arbitration, in a dispute, what Bangladesh needs to do is, is introduce pre-action discovery scenarios. For example, the parties may have a difference of opinion about interpretation or a commercial issues. If they had access to certain information and information and facts, they would may not have the dispute. The dispute may have erosion because the lack of misunderstanding between the parties. If pre-action discovery and disclosure, which is existing at the moment and is exercised properly in the UK, is introduced in our country, it will help the parties either to reduce the time frame in the disputes or recover some of the uh, remedies out of the parties or may resolve the reduce the number of dispute they have. For example, in the beginning, they have a dispute on five issues. Upon discovery and upon disclosing data among each other, sharing data with each other, it is possible that the disputes may reduce to two or at least one out of five, out of five. So that way we can introduce an efficient system of dispute resolution mechanism. Tribunal fees. I would like to share a personal example. After an arbitration, when the arbitration was commenced, the fees were set as X, number X, let's say 100. After several stages, the tribunal passed a procedural order, made it to 25 times higher. It became so high 
neither the claimant was approaching the tribunal nor that the respondent was approaching the tribunal. The, there was a total deadlock into the situation. The tribunal was not moving away from its position from increasing the fees and the claimant and that respondent was unable to bear the fees. Should the act contain guidelines as to what should be the ideal fees? I would say yes. There should be some indication that the fee should be rational, reasonable, should be proportionate to the quantum of the claim and the complexity of the disputes that are involved over here. For example, BIAC, Bangladesh International Arbitration Center, has introduced certain rate chart as to what should be the fees for each stages and tribunal members. S some indication should be in the act so the tribunals as well as the lawyers will be deterred from charging exorbitant fees for any arbitration. At the moment, at the moment, the arbitration is pure and simple talks about arbitration, but the world is moving to a new dimension. We should be encouraging mediation and amicable settlement even during pendency of the arbitration or before arbitration. At the moment, the arbitration act doesn't encourage the parties to discuss amicable settlement or mediation. The way to do it is encourage parties to not only agree into a clause which encourages mediation as well as arbitration. The parties need to enter into agreement for mediation arbitration and the arbitration tribunal should also encourage the parties to explore possibilities of mediation and resolution to reduce expenses and for a timely disposition, disposal of their disputes among the parties. Digitalization of stamp duty. Currently, stamp duty is only payable on the award. This has to be paid manually. I would, I would hope to see that Bangladesh would transform its digital, the stamp duty payment system into digital service so that we do not have to carry the stamp duties manually along with the award. We can pay into the chalan and the chalan copy can be attached with the copy or a digital trans receipt should be attached with the award as a, as, as, uh, as a proof of payment of stamp duty, number one. Number two, apart from the award, there are no stamp duty currently payable either on the interim orders also. There are other ways for the government to small stamp duties to be imposed over there also, which will help enable and those stamp duty revenue collected from the stamp duty could be used by the government for improving the justice delivery system as well as arbitration processes. Centralized database. Do we have a centralized database about the kind of arbitrations that are taking place in Bangladesh? Answer is not to the best of my knowledge. Why statistics are important for the government and for the Supreme Court to understand? That statistics will help the government to understand how we are improving, how our cases are unburdened from the court system and are being transformed into the arbitration system, how many cases are being resolved through mediation and arbitration over a year, what are the number of commercial disputes are being resolved in this manner, which cases are taking longer time and which cases are taking shorter time. If I may mention certain statistics from Bangladesh. For example, in 2018, 19 and 2020, year 2020 being the COVID year, there were no statistics maintained in the Supreme Court regarding the number of categories of cases that are filed in the uh, company court and admiralty court. In year 2021, the statistics were properly maintained. For example, there were 300 company matters filed. There were 50 plus admiralty cases. There were execution cases arising out of admiralty about three. Arbitration applications about 30, number of 30. There were 30, 10 plus trademark appeals, one copyright appeal. But when we go to district court, there are lots of title suits are being filed, money suits are being filed. And when we go to district court, there are arbitration applications, trademark applications, copyright applications, many applications. Are these categorized into several categories like arbitration, whether the money suit arising out of contract or orphan other law? No, currently though no such categories are maintained. At least for arbitration, if we can maintain a central database, at least with the Supreme Court, it will help the government within after every five years to review what other amendments need to be done, how we can improve the justice delivery system, how we can improve the arbitration and the justice delivery system that is maintained through the arbitration.
improvement regarding provisions regarding arbitration awards. Currently, the arbitration awards are executed in Bangladesh through a Code of Civil Procedure 1908. But that's a many years ago. And the process, it has to, one has to go to the district judge's court to enforce an arbitration award. The district judge is already overburdened with many different types of cases. When we go to go to the execution court, the district judge's court for execution arbitration award, it just, you know, the, one, one, another case, just one other case in its bundle of many other cases. So for the admission hearing, we may have to at least wait for three months just for the admission hearing. After the admission hearing, we have to take other procedural steps and the steps has to be taken in line with the 1908 procedure. If we can improve our code of civil procedure, at least with regard to the execution process, it will help us to improve the execution of an enforcement of arbitration awards. Without enforcement of the arbitration awards, the arbitration awards are just another judgment without any efficacy. Can Bangladesh become a suitable venue for arbitration? I am an optimistic person. I believe yes. We may recall that previously and still now, London has been a, one of the hub of arbitration. Whether the, does the investment needs to be in London or in UK for the arbitration to take place in, in the UK? Answer is no. The, the investment does not need to be in UK for the arbitration to take place in UK. Why did we choose UK for arbitration? Because the justice delivery system over there on commercial disputes was fair. It was fast and effective. But when London started to become more expensive, people started to do arbitrations in Hong Kong. When China took over Hong Kong, the arbitrations are taking place more and more in Singapore. Side by side, Malaysia is taking into the vacuum. Malaysia is coming up as an alternative venue because Singapore is becoming more expensive. India has upped up this game a few weeks ago. Therefore, I believe in Bangladesh is strategically located to become a hub for arbitration. Our investment does not necessarily have to be in Bangladesh, but the justice delivery system and arbitration itself can be a saleable commodity. By this, because the legal service itself is will become a sellable commodity. People will come, conduct the arbitration in Bangladesh, stay in the hotels, take the service, then again leave Bangladesh after dispose of the service. If they need assistance from the courts, there will be special courts in Bangladesh that will provide those assistance. People will leave down the disputes and again leave. By simply selling the service of justice delivery system in Bangladesh, it can be another sellable commodity that will bring foreign exchange revenue for Bangladesh. Fast track arbitration. For example, Singapore has introduced, UK haven't done it, so Singapore has introduced a fast track arbitration system. If the value of the arbitration is small or the parties are inclined to go for fast track arbitration system, then there is possibility that the, there will be only documentary only arbitration. There will be no oral hearing done by the parties all the pleadings and presentations will be done on paper and the arbitration will complete within let's say four months to six months. I believe the Arbitration Act of Bangladesh can be modified to encourage the tribunal and the parties for fast track arbitration system also, especially if it is a documentary only. Multi-party arbitrations. Currently arbitrations, the concept is that there will be only two parties, but in a real estate disputes, sometimes the parties can be multiple parties. All of them together fighting with each other, maybe arising of the same issue or similar issues. If multiple parties could be added into the same arbitration, in, then we can reduce the multiplicity of proceedings. Therefore, an arbitration act can also be modified to accommodate multi-party arbitration concepts also. Check and balance. There is sometimes uh, we, like any justice delivery system, sometimes we are not happy with the final award or the judgment. Currently, Bangladesh doesn't have, only has a system of challenging the arbitration award. We do not have an appeal system. On the other hand, UK English, English, English Arbitration Act 1996 provides for three different models of ways of challenging an arbitration award. One of them is an appeal, but only on limited grounds. We may follow the UK model in order to ensure that there are no unfairness. 
there are no unfairness in the arbitration system. And if there is an unfairness, that can be checked and corrected as, as quickly as possible. I thank you for your patient presentation on a, such a technical topic. Uh, I, my personal belief is that Bangladesh sits in a very strategic location for it to become and not only to deal with domestic and local arbitrations in order to improve local investments as well as foreign investments, but it also can sell its legal service as a sellable commodity to gather foreign exchange revenue for Bangladesh also. With that note of thanks, uh, I would like to take a leave. Thank you. Thanks. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Hadi, for a concise and um, thorough uh, presentation. Thank you, sir. Thank you for a comprehensive presentation, ladies and gentlemen. Now it's time to hear from our distinguished panel discussions. The session will be moderated by President DCCI, Barrister Mohammad Sami Sattar. Thank you. Uh, our first panelist is uh, Mr. Javed Akhtar, who is the CEO and Managing Director of Unilever Bangladesh uh, Limited. Uh, Javed Bhai, welcome to Dhaka Chamber. Um, uh, Mr. Javed, you are in charge of one of the leading multinational companies in Bangladesh. So from a foreign investor's perspective, how important is the issue of the enforcement of contract and arbitrations when deciding whether to invest in a country? Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, firstly, I would like to thank this initiative to you and DCCI for organizing this and as well as to the Honorable Minister to come and grace the occasion and His Excellency Robert Chatterton Dixon. Uh, it's an important aspect, the whole area of arbitra arbitration. And uh, Barrister Hadi has given a comprehensive uh, um, perspective of arbitration. In fact, I, I, it was almost a good 101 to go into some of the things that could have overall the economy and the business environment. Now, if I take Unilever or any organization that really wants to come and invest, one of the important aspects that they look is the country's legal framework in terms of how it does. And there are two aspects to it. One is, and you mentioned that in your speech as well, contract enforcement is a critical one. And subsequently, the other one is also arbitration. And the reason for arbitration is also because most of the organization prefer arbitration over litigation. And the logic for arbitration is that it is cost effective, it is faster resolution as well, and it is effective for uh, all parties. And that's the sort of context. The reality on the ground, and, and Ambassador Hadi had given some reference, and I'm referring to a World Bank report, it takes approximately four years to settle average in any arbitration. And it almost takes account 65% of the claim amount as a cost. I mean, that itself is a starting point, saying that there's probably something that we need to address and how do you really simplify. And, and if I go back into some of these challenges as an organization, I think the point being that we must always remember uh, foreign investors look for alternate dispute resolution over litigation, and that is a preferred model. And they would like to see that that gets reflected. And in order to do that, a few things, uh, if I may just uh, maybe for consideration and many things have talked about, I think the time aspect is, is very critical, absolutely, because how do you really close, uh, bring closure faster? because that's uh, critical. Second is, um, I think there is a need for specialized resources because arbitration requires a bit of understanding of the different aspects as well. And how do you really up the resources that actually come to the arbitration? The third one is there are contradiction, even in, within the act of the arbitration act, in some cases, there are things that are left to subjectivity. And how do you really bring a bit more objectivity? Because I believe that can significantly aid the overall arbitration process itself. And finally, um, I'm a big believer of digitization because, and, and the Honorable Prime Minister has uh, has been really advocating smart Bangladesh. And I believe it's about time. How do you really get into a smart arbitration model within our country itself? And I believe uh, if we can really also raise the awareness, the importance of alternate dispute resolution. I don't think across uh, the industry, there's a lot of awareness about it. I think it can significantly benefit. So there were some of my points. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Akhtar. Thank you for uh, pointing out some salient points. As uh, Mr. Hadi has also pointed out that uh, businesses feel that time is the biggest enemy for arbitration. 
And not only is there an absence of a fixed timeline, but also after going through an expensive arbitration process, parties are ending up in the local courts where they need to go for enforcement at the district court level. Um, our next panelist is uh, Mr. Yasir Azman, who is the Chief Executive Officer of Grameen Phone Limited. Mr. Azman, thank you for uh, coming to Dhaka Chamber of Commerce and being uh, uh, and agreeing to be a panelist here. He, G, Grameen Phone has been <clears throat> involved in uh, various arbitrations over the years. Um, so how do you think that the arbitration regime can be improved in uh, Bangladesh? Thank you, uh, President. Respected uh, chief guest, today's a special guest and all the distinguished audience. Good afternoon and greetings from Grameen Phone. I think uh, it's not only for any foreign investment, it's anyone, any business entity. Arbitration, the predictability, certainty, the protection of investment is important, right? And here comes the arbitration. Uh, at the same time, um, dispute may always arise. You know, it's natural, it's very natural. Uh, but in the traditional court, it, it is expensive, it is time consuming and it gets complex. So we look forward to alternative uh, dispute resolution. And uh, at the same time, we understand that there are improvement areas, even though Arbitration Act 2001 has been a very laudable initiative, uh, but we can always look forward to move further uh, into this. And our uh, key note speaker, Ashraful Hadi Bester, has really gone into details uh, to identify the improvement areas, providing the solution, also citing some examples. If I may, very high level talk about few things. Uh, number one, how to encourage more, you know, how to encourage arbitration more. We have actually, if I talk about Grameen Phone, we have actually um, resolved many disputes, many disputes, I would say, uh, through various alternative dispute resolution um, uh, processes under different laws with different authorities, especially with NBR, a very transparent way. So it works actually, and when it works, it's win-win situation for both and for the country. But at the same time, we have also experienced that even though in our license, there were, you know, a clause for arbitration under the Arbitration Act, but at one point of time, it has been taken out and we could not have arbitration uh, with our regulatory body. You know, it's like, and the case is pending for long. So how do you basically make it more agile? You know, it's like the keynote speaker is talking about not only arbitration, within arbitration, how we can make an amicable solution, mediation, you know, to look forward that sort of improvement. The second, I would say that uh, uh, Zabed also highlighted that how do you use the technology? How, how can we digitalize to make it more faster, easier, you know, transparent while filing the documents, you know, and how do you basically also make the access to justice is easier? And the last thing from my side that how do you balance the need for going to court? You know, while even in arbitration, we see that the, the enforcement of the clauses of the arbitration to, to enforcing it, we are going to court. To take, you know, even within uh, the, the arbitration process, we are seeing the interim decision is being challenged in the court. To appoint the arbitrator, we are going to the court. You know, to get an injunction, we are going to the court. So how do you balance it? So I would like to highlight these three things. You know, it's like make it more enforceable arbitration act, make it more digitalized and, trans and transparent, and make the balance between, you know, within the arbitration where how do you go, you know, um, uh, use the court system in the country. I believe that, you know, it's like for, for foreign investors in Bangladesh, the vision 2041 uh, is a very strong, you know, leadership vision has been set. And one of the biggest pillar out of this Vision 24-1 to materialize is to attract foreign investors. And they will look after a lot of opportunities and they will bring up a lot of technologies and resources, but the country can provide a protection on the out of their investment through proper arbitration act enforcement. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Azman. I think uh, it is good to know that you have been resolving many disputes successfully in Bangladesh, even with the NBR. So that's, uh, that's a spite of relief. 
Um, you're right to say that uh, mediation uh, should be included. Uh, this is a unique suggestion uh, that uh, came out of from uh, Mr. Hadi's uh, presentation. Usually in court proceedings, we have seen that mediation has been included, but the fact that a mediation clause may be inserted in the Arbitration Act to uh, give the parties an opportunity uh, to mediate their dispute while the arbitration is going on is also noteworthy. I think digitalization is uh, the vision of our Honorable Prime Minister and in line with our, vis uh, with our Honorable Prime Minister's vision, I think work is already ongoing with respect to digitizing many of the uh, court proceedings as well. And I'll, we'll hear from our Honorable Chief Guest. Um, how do we value the need for the balance for going to court? Uh, I think that also came up in the presentation by Mr. Hadi as to how the more you make the tribunal effective, the more you make give tribunal powers, which can be exercised, which have been traditionally been exercised by the court, the lesser the parties will be uh, running towards the court for protection. So I think these are valuable suggestions and uh, something that our honorable chief guest is also taking note of. Uh, at this point in time, I would like to invite uh, Pramod Nair, who's from India. Mr. Nair is one of the youngest senior advocates of India and one of the leading arbitration practitioners of India. I had the opportunity since our British High Commissioner is here. Both of us worked in London together. Pramod was in Herbert Smith, the law firm, while I was in Deborah Boys in Plimpton. And we always used to go for lunches together. And now we, he's back in India. And now I'm back in Bangladesh. Uh, Mr. Nair, thank you for joining us from India. Um, you, we wanted to know that, um, you know, India has already amended the Arbitration Act as far as our knowledge goes. We wanted to know whether these amendments were actually helpful in practice or was it just uh, amendments made on paper? And how did it fare with the uh, FDI foreign investment regime? Over to you, Mr. Nair. Thank you, Samir, and um, it's very good to see you, albeit uh, virtually, and thank you for the invite and for all of you to uh, have me on this wonderful, wonderful program. Uh, you know, I, I, what I'd like to do is to very briefly share India's experience with certain amendments to Arbitration Act and what its actual impact on the ground has been. Uh, listening to Mr. Ashraful Hadi, you know, I think I realized that not only do India and Bangladesh have a common history and very similar cultures, I think we've also had to face very similar legal problems uh, and definitely when it comes to arbitration as well. Uh, and I think the reason for that is the, the legal systems are not dissimilar. And as far as the Bangladesh Arbitration Act of 2001 is concerned, it's very similar to the Indian Arbitration Act of 1996. But that should come as no surprise because both these legis legislations have uh, it's uh, have their provenance uh, emanating from the ancestral model of 1985, which is the legislative template for both these arbitration enactments. And uh, go, you know, listening very keenly to Mr. Hadi's presentation, a number of the problems that he outlined were problems that were encountered in India as well, which were sought to then be addressed by two sets of amendments that were brought in in 2015 and 2019. And just to answer Samir's uh, question straight away before going into some of the detail of these amendments, when, before these amendments were brought into force uh, in 2015 and 2019, in 2014, India's rank in the World Bank's ease of doing business report was uh, a very, very um, bleak uh, number 142. After the amendments were introduced uh, in 2015 and 2019, India jumped 79 places. And in 2020, on the ease of doing business, it will go up higher. And, and that's because I think today, eight out of 10 commercial contracts in India have arbitration clauses. That is clearly the preferred mechanism of resolving disputes. And if you make arbitration more um, uh, expeditious, if you make it more efficient, then obviously it has a direct impact on the ease of doing business in a country. So in terms of some of the problems that um, Ashraful uh, identified, let me just very quickly give you what India's experience has been in terms of making amendments and how they've actually worked. Uh, India had a similar issue uh, as, as Bangladesh. Uh, Ashraful mentioned that the uh, Bangladeshi, Arbit Bangladeshi Arbitration Act only 
be applies to arbitrations that were seated in, in uh, Bangladesh. Uh, that is true. Most arbitration legislations are territorial and they govern arbitrations which happen in their territory. But arbitration can also be international. There could be arbitrations involving a Bangladeshi party which happens in a seat outside Bangladesh. Uh, for a long time, the Indian courts were powerless to actually intervene and support those arbitrations. Uh, and, and that has now been remedied by virtue of the 2015 amendments. So even if the seat of arbitration is outside India today, the Indian courts are still empowered to grant interim measures of protection to uh, support those arbitrations, especially when it is required to, for example, prevent alienation uh, of assets which are situated in India. Uh, and that's probably the most effective uh, interim order that you can get. So the Indian courts do intervene quite frequently when it comes to uh, arbitrations that are seated outside India as well, uh, when it comes to ordering interim measures of protection, or for that matter, even assisting in obtaining evidence which is based in India. Uh, one uh, amendment that India has not made, but which I would definitely recommend to the policymakers and the legislators in Bangladesh would be to also provide expressly for a regime for adoption of emergency arbitrator decisions. Uh, emergency arbitrators are now quite common. Uh, emergency arbitration is a default uh, pretty much in all the leading international arbitration rules, and it works very well in practice. You get an, uh, a, a well-reasoned, very detailed and enforceable decision uh, by an emergency arbitrator within a very quick time frame of 14 days, which is simply not possible from a state court. Uh, but in order to give those provisions teeth, what is required is are certain tweaks in the national legislation to enable easy enforcement of such decisions. India has not done that. I think that's a shortcoming of the act. But many jurisdictions across the world, notably Hong Kong and Singapore, have done it with very, very welcome effects. So I think this is probably a tweak that Bangladesh could certainly keep in mind. Second, uh, there are uh, provisions now made in the Indian Arbitration Act to deal with uh, enforcement of interim orders made by an arbitral tribunal. Uh, an interim order made by an arbitral tribunal has the same force and effect as an order made by the court. Uh, it doesn't have to then be converted into a decree of the, co of the court. There are are sanctions for people who disobey orders of the arbitral tribunal. You can have actions uh, taken for contempt of court for a disobedience of an order passed by an arbitral tribunal. And that has really helped to scale up compliance with decisions of the, uh, of the arbitral tribunals. Third, as uh, Ashraful mentioned, I think uh, India's experience has been that uh, the establishment of specialized commercial courts has gone a long way in assisting uh, the efficiency of the arbitration process. There are specialized commercial courts across the country. Uh, uh, commercial disputes above a particular monetary threshold automatically get referred to the commercial courts. The commercial courts have a much faster timeline of decision making. It's less than a year in most cases, whereas the normal process would take uh, three years or more. And, and that really has helped in the Indian context. Uh, I think India is probably the first jurisdiction in the world which introduced both time limits as well as fee limits for arbitration. And that is to address the uh, problem that a couple of the speakers before me have identified, which is arbitration is often criticized as being uh, now far too expensive and taking far too long. Uh, that's a process, that's a, that's a problem that we have faced in India as well. And the solution to that has been to introduce a time frame for the resolution of disputes through arbitration. That's a default period of one year, which can then be uh, adjusted by consent between the parties, but the default period is one year. There are also time limits. Uh, in addition to time limits, there are also fee limits that have been introduced. Uh, and, and that's to essentially deal with a problem where sometimes arbitrators have a perverse incentive to prolong an arbitration in our part of the world. Uh, arbitrators are often paid on a per hearing basis. So if you can increase the number of hearings, then there is a, a financial reward for the delay uh, and arbitrators benefit from, from it. In order to deal with that, there is now a fee limit. There's a maximum amount of fees that an arbitrator can be paid for a particular dispute, which is then determined by the value of the, of the dispute. And that has helped uh, uh, immeasurably in making arbitration more accessible and uh, less expensive. 
Uh, the last uh, point that I'd like to make is with respect to fast track arbitrations, India has made specific provisions for fast track arbitrations for disputes which are low and medium value. Uh, these arbitrations will have to be completed within a period of around six months or six months or less, uh, often on a documents only basis. And I think the pandemic has been especially helpful for the arbitration world. Now, more and more arbitrations, uh, arbitration hearings are held electronically. People don't need to travel to various places to participate in arbitrations. Document management is often organized electronically. There are databases that are, that are maintained electronically. And I think the fusion of ODR, which is online dispute resolution with ADR, alternate dispute resolution has worked brilliantly in the Indian context to one, uh, bring down the costs of an arbitration and at the same time increase the speed of the arbitration. So these are some uh, experiences that I wanted to share with you with respect to India's amendments to the Arbitration Act. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, Pramod. I think uh, these are valuable suggestions for us to take note of. And also the starting was actually quite good, the, how India improved in their rankings just by amending the Arbitration Act, and uh, I, uh, we hope that Bangladesh uh, will uh, follow suit. Um, in terms of your uh, time limits, I think we're all in agreement regarding uh, incorporating timelines for uh, the arbitration to finish within a specific uh, time period. I think that will encourage users of arbitration to come forward um, because now uh, arbitration has been stigmatized with lengthy uh, time periods, which is neither beneficial for the lawyers nor beneficial for the parties. Um, from an arbitrator's perspective, obviously in inserting a uh, uh, fee limit <laughs> is uh, I'm probably not ideal, but uh, today I'm wearing the hat uh, and representing the business community, so probably the users of, of arbitration. But uh, thank you. Thank you so much for jo joining us from, from all the way to India. Uh, we hope to see you when you come to to Bangladesh uh, and uh, look forward to that date. Um, Thank you. With, uh, with this, uh, we would like to take two, three questions or comments, uh, actually not questions, rather comments from the floor, if you have any, but I would request everyone to keep it within a minute or two, as uh, we're all fasting and we do not want to make this a lengthy process. Thank you. Anyone from the floor? Mr. Siddiqui, please introduce yourself and uh, give your comments. So, uh, MS, MS Siddiqui is chairman, convener, standing committee on country competitiveness. So, we are the organizer of this seminar here today. So, uh, my first comment is that uh, Bangladesh uh, already signed uh, the New York Convention. Uh, so, so, it means we will encourage commercial dispute to go to the arbitration or alternative dispute resolution more broadly. But uh, you will see when you will go to the court, you will see many hundreds of cases, especially for the uh, payment of the letter of credits. And uh, as you know that the payment for the letter of credits and the dispute on any issue, or uh, it is totally separate. The banks are place bound to pay the uh, money, whatever be the claim or compensation. But uh, in uh, very often, the courts in Bangladesh used to impose injunction on payment of the letter of credit. So we are, we are not following the New York Convention in this regard. And uh, the uh, Article 3 of the, uh, the preferred presenter says, uh, Bangladesh have some few case I want to refer to. One case is the HRC case. Um, it, the, the, the dispute was uh, uh, in process in London uh, arbitration. Then the party won't go to the court and say you impose an injunction. The court says no. This is a, it is in an arbitration process. We cannot interfere in the process. But in this similar occasion, in another case, in another bench of high court, in the case of STH and Magna Group of Bangladesh, there was a, it was uh, pay, the arbitration was pending in Singapore court, and then. Uh, then the party went to the uh, overseas party went to the it is a matter of supply of some consignment so they they came to the court that uh, please impose an injunction on local party the magna group not to sell 
dispose of this consignment unless it is settled by arbitration. Then again, the court says we, should, we are not willing to uh, interfere since it is not in a, in a arbitration in Bangladesh. So the two cases of two high court branches was different on the same point. I don't know the any other cases updated. These are two celebrity, uh, well-known cases uh, referred to many articles. Thank you. Uh, interesting enough, only one point. Bangladesh is very famous for Simon case. There was arbitration in BIAC, Bangladesh Arbitration Center. And decision goes in favor of SIPEM, the gas company. Then, then the high court, the lower court intervened there. They say they null and void the judgment of arbitration court. So it is a very bad reference globally. Whenever there is a uh, discussion on intervention of the local court over the arbitration court, they, they used to very safely refer to the siphon case. So negatively, Bangladesh is from for, for this case. So thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. Actually, um, thank you very much. One of the things that you've mentioned about uh, the conflicting decision, decisions of the high court. Now, more or less, um, even uh, after those two cases, there have been cases by the decided by the High Court, which have tried to follow the revised ancestral model law and try to clarify this confusion. Because, uh, as you know, our law, the Arbitration Act, was based on the ancestral model law, which itself has been revised in 2006. And those revisions will need to come into place to bring more clarity to the current arbitration act and once the reform takes place we are hoping that these are the certain points that will be addressed um is there anyone else that would like to make uh, comments brief comments i will take two more comments if there is otherwise i will go to the thing yes please <clears throat> thank you very much mr president my speech will be in bangla Pradhan Otiti Aske, Anishalog Bhai, and British High Commissioner Mr. Dixon is our good friend. Last time I met, inshallah, with kite flight. Remember that one? Amadir Akte Kota Amayan Nahula Abdus Salam. I mean, Senior Vice President Chilam Dhaka Chamber of Commerce and Industry. I mean, Uron. डेप्थे आतंकित इटा बार बार प्रश्न जगते से जे समय बेपट्टा ये समय टेकें किन्तु आमदेर वो बाप बापे व्याप्षक भी रह जाए ऐ पूला जाए फाइनल करे तो काजे का जे कोतो समय जा आमदेर इटे चुले जाए इटे जो नास के आमदेर अनिश्चित भाई के आम्रा इटे इटे ये बेपट्टा एक तो आप टेके भाई बोला मैं जो ने आम्रा � तो आपने ऐसा सुनो जो एक तो देख बैन तो समय ऐसा किल जाते ना हो समय मध्य जाते ऐसा हुए जाए ऐसा जो ना मैं आपके आवारों नोरों जाते हैं थैंक यू थैंक यू थैंक यू मिस्टर सलाम एनीवन फॉर द फाइनल कमेंट्स ओके इफ देयर इज नो फर्दर कमेंट्स देन एट दिस स्टेज आई पास इट ऑन बैक टू द एमसी � Thank, thank you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, may I now request our today's special guest, His Excellency, Mr. Robert Chatterton Dixon, High Commissioner, British High Commission in Bangladesh, to say a few words. Assalamu alaikum. It's a huge, my, right, it's a huge pleasure to be here uh, today, and I'd like to thank the Dhaka Chamber of Commerce and Industry team who've worked so hard uh, to pull this event together as part of their wide 
the work on how to simplify processes and tackle the bottlenecks constraining the growth of the private sector. Uh, foreign direct investment is vital to growth in any economy. It provides capital, expertise, training and technology and shows that businesses can operate to global standards in Bangladesh. And I'm very pleased that UK companies represent the second largest cumulative stock of direct investment, including world leading names like HSBC, Standard Chartered and of course Unilever. And it's very good to see you this morning, Javed, with a joined up UK commercial and diplomatic approach. Um, I think the important point for this morning is that with LDC graduation now within sight, uh, foreign direct investment will become even more important as Bangladesh graduates from being a least developed country. And I know from many discussions with investors here and elsewhere that there's an important association between the legal environment, foreign direct investment and commerce and growth. And I think despite Bangladesh's extraordinary success in two decades of remarkable economic growth, that iron principle will apply here as well. Because foreigners can take their money wherever they feel most confident. And a post-LDC graduation Bangladesh will be competing with other middle income countries who are more competitive in this space, including names like Vietnam, Indonesia and Malaysia. And among the keys to the confidence that international investors need to bring their money to Bangladesh are sound and enforceable commercial laws, an affordable commercial dispute resolution system. And these things are vital to enable open economies to create the opportunities that are needed to propel continued economic growth for a country which will have less access to concessionary finance and may find itself competing in a more difficult environment on market access elsewhere. But foreign investors require protection of their investment. They require protection against risks of expropriation. They require protection through dispute settlement mechanisms, and they require protection of their intellectual property. And resolve, in resolving all of these and de developing confidence, an appropriate dispute resolution tool is key so that the parties involved can take advantage of a speedy and effective legal process such as litigation and arbitration. And it, I think it's worth bearing in mind the starting point here in Bangladesh. We've worked for many years in justice sector reform in all sorts of different areas, and I've been very pleased to work with his, the excellent law minister, His Excellency the law minister, on many of these issues. But it's fair to say that the impact of that work has been limited in terms of the commercial justice system. As in many countries, we see the justice system here overwhelmed with the backlog of a huge number of court cases uh, here in Bangladesh. And we see weaknesses in the commercial legal environment, including loophole, loopholes in relevant laws and regulations, hindering business and investment opportunities. And the particular relevance to this morning's discussion, the enforcement of contract remains a key challenge in improving the business climate here in Bangladesh. The recently discontinued World Bank doing the ease of doing business report ranked Bangladesh next to last in enforcing contracts among 190 economies. We've touched on some of this already during the discussion, but it takes around four years and costs over 65% of the claim value on average for businesses to enforce contracts. The absence of specialized commercial courts, the slow pace of digitization, not enough coverage of commercial law in the curriculum, and the lack of wider usage of ADR, alternative dispute resolution, all contribute, as we have discussed this morning, to the current situation. But I think that experience and evidence show that despite the overwhelming challenges, it is possible to reform commercial laws. It is possible to deliver specific improvements which can make it easier to enforce contract and resolve disputes speedily and efficiently. And I think it's been particularly interesting to hear the Indian example as a powerful sign of what can be achieved and also the impact that that achievement can have on both perceptions and realities of the ease of doing business uh, in a country. And as I say, I think for Bangladesh, this is a really crucial nettle that needs to be grasped now with the prospect of LDC graduation now three years, ago, three years away. So it's essential that Bangladesh continues, we think, as ones who work closely with international investors, with both regulatory and policy reforms, together with systematic improvements to continue on this business in 
business climate improvement trajectory. And I think this morning's uh, idea set out by Barrister Ashraf al Hadi and what we heard from next door in India provide a really good set of practical steps which could be taken uh, to develop this extraordinary factor in building the confidence of international investors. And I don't think any of this will come as a surprise. None of this is new, but this is the moment when discussion needs to be converted, I think, into action. Otherwise, the risk is that graduation will come with an unreformed Bangladeshi legal system, which will leave the country much more exposed to a lack of foreign direct investment and make much more difficult the next decade of what should be continued remarkable economic growth in Bangladesh. So I very much hope in conclusion that the discussions and recommendations that have been presented today at this seminar will form a strong basis for reviewing the existing mechanisms for resolving commercial disputes and passing an amended Arbitration Act as soon as possible. I think it's a really relevant discussion to have had. I'm delighted that the DACA Chamber of Commerce and Industry is focusing on this, and I'm very pleased to have been given the opportunity to take part. Thank you very much indeed. Onek Donabak. Thank you. Thank you, Excellency. I think you've uh, made a very good point about perception and reality. And uh, I think with the reform of the Arbitration Act, not only the perception of Bangladesh will change from a business perspective, but also in reality, arbitration users will be able to benefit uh, from the amendments that may come through in the future. Uh, back to you. Thank you, His Excellency. Ladies and gentlemen, now it's time to hear from our chief guest. May I now humbly call upon Mr. Anisul Haq MP, Honorable Minister, Ministry of Law, Justice and Parliamentary Affairs, Government of the People's Republic of Bangladesh to kindly deliver his speech. <coughs> Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Honorable Chair, President, Dhaka Chamber of Commerce and Industries, Honorable spe Special Guest, His Excellency Mr. Robert Chatterton Dixon, High Commissioner, British High Commissioner, British High Commission in Bangladesh, distinguished participants, journalists, ladies and gentlemen. Assalamu alaikum. A very good afternoon, Ramadan Kareem. It is a matter of great pleasure and privilege for me to be here with all of you as the chief guest in the seminar titled Revisiting Arbitration Act for promoting foreign direct investment in Bangladesh. My heartiest thanks goes to to the organizers of the seminar who of course are willing to boost the investment climate in Bangladesh inviting more and more foreign direct investment in Bangladesh so to enhance our economic strength. Ladies and gentlemen, before going to the topic directly I would like to provide a short overview concerning the progressive development of our legal and judicial system in connection with the Alternative Dispute Resolution ADR mechanism in Bangladesh, where arbitration is an important co component. The prevailing civil court system in Bangladesh may be looked into to realize the necessity of ADR, including arbitration. Section 9 of the Code of Criminal S Civil Procedure provides that courts will try suits of civil nature involving the civil disputes or right to an office. The suit is to be instituted by presentation of a plaint and the plaint must contain particulars to be included therein. And, a, and if a plaint does not include those particulars as required, it is to be ret returned or rejected as is as inappropriate. But by introduction of section 89A in 2003 in the Code of Civil Procedure this, and subsequent amendment thereof, there is a legal obligation to exhaust the alternative dispute resolution process in the form of mediation, which is flexible, informal, non-binding, confidential, non-adversarial, and consensual in nature. In case of failure of ADR, normal course of civil procedure will be followed involving appearances of parties to the suit or the consequences of their non-appearance. Recording of evidence, examination of witnesses, cross-examination, argument and counter-argument, etc. All of which is time-consuming. Traditional civil, civil litigation process is being dealt with the CPC or the civil rules and orders. And our experience says 
that are by introduction of alternative dispute resolution mechanism, we can get faster access to justice. For example, the Family Court Ordinance 1985 is the most successful illustration in our legal system. Family Court Ordinance 1985 sections 10, 11 and 13 gives the parties the opportunity to mediate. The success has been evidenced by the fact that there were no less than 16 pilot projects in 16 districts in between the period of 2000 and 2001. And it is found that no less than 35% of the total pending cases are disposed of by alternative dispute resolution. This statistic shows that if we could promote ADR process, including arbitration, by sensitizing the judges, litigants, and the lawyers, the process of disposal of cases would gain speed. Now, Section 89A of the CPC has been made compulsory by an amendment in 2012, which of course requires to be practiced wholeheartedly by all concerned. Orthori Nadalot, 2003, Muslim Family Law Ordinance, 1961, Village Court Act, 2006, the Conciliation of Dispute Municipal Board Act, the Labor Act, all of these have arbitration processes in place as, as required. We can also refer to the Legal Aid Services Act 2000, Section 21A, which provides for the appointment of Legal Aid Officer for Mediation, the Income Tax Ordinance 1984, and the Customs Act 1969. Finally, the VAT Act 2012, and the rules framed thereunder all have the arbitration clauses there. The provisions for arbitration in these laws show Bangladesh's keenness to encourage alternative dispute resolution and to bring about a sea change in the business climate. It is undoubtedly true that traditional court system is time consuming and cumbersome to settle dispute. So there is cons consistent effort to put a sound legal and regulatory framework in place in Bangladesh relating to ADR. Well-established case, ma case management system, court automation, computerization are needed for an efficient and effective legal and judicial system. Bangladesh is gradually moving towards that system. Ladies and gentlemen, ADR mechanism may bring efficiency in deciding disputes, decreasing black backlog of cases, reducing high cost and delay. That's why pop popularity of ADR is increasing by the day, particularly for settling commercial dispute, which is confidential in business relationship. Lawyers community should come forward to encourage litigants to settle the dispute through ADR because it saves business time and money. In complex business dealings, special ADR program may be introduced, engaging the technical experts in the related fields. But the Bangladesh Investment Development Authority has undertaken numerous reforms to ensure one-stop service to the investors, facilitating business environment to the entrepreneurs in the field of ease of doing business, shown by the World Bank, World Economic Forum, to achieve sustainable development goals, institution-based ADR, ADR. Bangladesh is a party to the New York Convention on the Recognition and Enforcement of Foreign Arbitral our Arbitration Act 2001 was based on unitral model law. Section 45 of the Arbitration Act provides for recognition and enforcement of foreign arbitral award in a prescribed manner. We are seriously of for Bangladesh to become a party to Singapore Convention 2018 on mediation. Executive and legislative framework to that end is being readied. Further, I would like to state that the Arbitration Act 2001 may be revisited in consultation with the stakeholders as to whether there is any in insufficiency for its smooth functioning. We must note that ADR's success rests more on changing the mindset rather than procedure, the propensity to initiate a case and to drag it for years together must end. To, I see that the problems that I have understood from here is that, you see, 
in arbitration cases we have found that the speedy resolution is stopped by challenging orders of the arbitration authority by making procedure complex by not having dedicated courts and also there is if i may say a lack of trust in the courts that that do uh, deal with arbitration it must be understood that arbitration is an informal process and that must not be complicated by undue interventions of formal legal forums therefore we look into it we will look into it and moreover we will look into the suggestions made today and we will examine them in concluding i call upon the business community the legal community and the litigant public to use adr mechanism especially arbitration and mediation to resolve their disputes as it will be faster and simpler it is an established fact that practice makes perfect so in applying these methods there may be potholes pitfalls but i can assure you that the government of honorable sheikh hasina will always remain engaged with you the stakeholders to address the problems to remove them and make the path of adr through arbitration or mediation smooth and hassle free thank you eid mubarak to you all joy bangla joy bangla thank you minister I'd like to request president haka chamber to hand over dcs recommendations and issues of arbitration to our honorable chief guest thank you sir ladies and gentlemen we are almost at the end of our today's event before that i would like to request mr mohammad junaid ibn ali vice president dhaka chamber to give his closing remarks bismillahir rahmanir rahim assalamu alaikum and good afternoon i would like to convey my heartfelt thanks on behalf of dhaka chamber of commerce and industry to all distinguished guests and participants for their active participation and fruitful conversation however i would like to take this opportunity to express my sincere gratitude to our chief guest mr anisul haq mp honorable minister for law justice and parliamentary affairs government of bangladesh for his insightful remarks on the arbitration act we are also delighted to have his excellency mr robert jetterton dixon the british high commissioner to bangladesh as our special guest and to hear his thoughts on this subject in this indeed also our pleasure listening to barrister ashraful hadi the keynote presenter on this very timely issue ladies and gentlemen for the discussion it is necessitating it is uh, evident that foreign trade business disputes are diverse and incremental necessitating modest change in the current arbitration act for smooth solutions and it will be effective if all the stakeholders including the policy makers and private sector work jointly to bring in such changes to the given law for effective adr ecosystem in bangladesh resulting into foreign investment growth in bangladesh the thoughtful suggestions of this program that might influence bangladesh ability to attract fdi in the near future these recommendations will be sent to the concerned authority and respected guests for effective decision making before concluding once again i would like to thank our distinguished guests and the respected participants for the making this event a successful one thank you standing committee for helping with this seminar thank you and allah hafiz thank you sir and with this here we end our today's seminar thank you all once again for being with us allah hafiz